that's the way you connect with the new Mobitel Remix. Enjoy free M2M voice minutes, SMS, data, fast minutes and 50% discounts on excess data and three fabulous add-on prepaid packages. Dial hash 649 hash to activate. Mobitel. We care. Always. If you're looking for a leasing company to make your wheels go around with fast, friendly and hassle-free service. Together with flexibility and the best interest rates in town. Let us show you how we can make your world go round. People's Leasing Company. We're the number one in leasing because pleasing people is our number one priority. Welcome back to Benchmark. My name is Nishu Hashim and with me now is market analyst and LMD columnist Hasitha Prema Ratna with the latest on the Bose. Hasitha, now things have changed since the last time that we spoke to you. The ASPI went up along with the Milanka Index and then it corrected itself. Now what do you attribute this recovery of sorts to? Yeah, I think if you look at the last month, uh, we have seen the index moving from 4,900 levels to about 5,900, briefly touching the 6,000 points. Uh, and thereafter, we saw a lot of resistance, in fact, the selling pressure coming in, and the market started to uh, gradually correct from that point and uh, ended up in the range of about 5,800 to 5,900 points. Now, now if, you, if you look at the pickup from 4,900 at about 1,000 points within a very short period of time, it came as a, I would say, uh, somewhat a fundamental, with some fundamental backing because the market was depressed. It came down quite too, too sharply at a time and it naturally deserved uh, a certain level of uh, recovery from that level. Mm -hmm. But having said that, what really triggered it? Yes, there were some changes in the regulatory uh, framework and some of the credit uh, barriers that were made uh, in, the, in the market. Uh, but overall, I think what is important to look at here is that the, the, the pickup and the recovery in the index uh, came in uh, with uh, somewhat fundamental backings and some changes in the broader economy, especially when you think about the situation on the, on the currency. We saw the currency uh, settling down from a very much uh, depreciative mode and now it's uh, hovering around 128, 29 range. So, so c coming into that and settling down was a positive. Balance of payments looks to be settling down. Um, the interest rates seem to be uh, somewhat, uh, you know, settling down. In fact, it, uh, at least the upward pressure is uh, reducing. So these fundamental changes have brought in some level of stability into the uh, economy and obviously to the companies as well. So there was a reason that, that for the index to actually pick up. You have spoken about defensive stocks before. How have they fared with the sudden upsurge in the market? Uh, well, with the market moving uh, quite sizably within a short period of time. We have seen more uh, the defensive stocks uh, settling down. In fact, they have not really moved significantly uh, as some of the other stocks. There have been some positive movements, but definitely uh, the stocks like uh, uh, tobacco, so CTC, uh, even Caltex for that matter, they have moved up, but they have not really moved with the market and are not are really outperformed in that short period of time. And that's something that we can expect from def defensive stocks because they are more expected to sort of provide a, a longer term uh, average return, uh, maybe uh, above the market and especially outperform the market when the market is doing a bit bad. Uh, but uh, when the overall sentiment is positive, uh, these stocks uh, generally tend to take a uh, I would say a bit of a uh, slowdown or maybe a bit of a kind of a modest uh, situation so that it will not just uh, kind of you know blow up uh, like some of the other stocks. But having said that, I think what is important to look at is again if the fundamentals of some of these uh, areas, some of these stocks uh, move rapidly, right, or there are some significant changes, then these stocks may also move. But at this point of time, we haven't seen any major changes. Uh, if you take some of the defensive stocks like Nestle's, like uh, uh, CTC, uh, like Caltex, uh, like Lion Brewery, they have moved up, but they haven't really outperformed the market during this uh, one month where we saw a sizable improvement in the overall market. In this month's issue of LMD, you say that penny stocks were responsible for the mini bull run. Now, have those investors who burnt their fingers, so to speak, on these very same stocks 
not learnt from the lessons of the past? And aren't they exposing themselves to more risk? Yeah, I think uh, we saw this situation maybe uh, about a little over a year ago, a year and a half ago, where when the index was about 7,700 and then suddenly when the market started to come down, uh, these investors who invested in these penny stocks and uh, uh, in the artificial rallies, those who maybe benefited at a particular point of time, crashing and losing money big time. So this situation, um, if you look at in the last month, uh, has been less compared to what it used to be a year, year and a half ago. But then having said that, is it uh, completely controlled? No, because there is an element of uh, uh, rumor-driven, sentiment-driven uh, penny stocks, which probably with hardly any fundamental backing, uh, still moving up uh, with no proper justifiable reason or logic. So these stocks, again, when they come down, they come down quite sharply. So what the message probably is that the, as the investors uh, who are jump, jumping into these stocks, particularly the retail guys, uh, they seem to have still not, you know, got, got the message or got the uh, areas of problems that they faced uh, last year or maybe throughout the last year. So essentially, I think what is important is that uh, there is a change, there is the amount of the such transactions and such uh, movements in uh, indexes, in the, uh, stocks have con got controlled. Uh, but has it uh, completely got control? No, but I think it will take a little more time. But good news is that there is at least a slowdown in such uh, volatility and such creative artificial type of movement in the market, uh, which I think time to time will get uh, further reduced. And as a result, uh, investors will uh, sort of, you know, in, uh, behave in the market in a more educated uh, manner where fundamentals will prevail uh, compared to just artificial rallies and sentiment driven type of uh, approach uh, that some of the retailers take. But I think it's important that uh, uh, the entire community, starting from the regulator, uh, also coming into the stock brokers who play a very, very important role in this whole market activity, and also the investors themselves, especially the retail investors, understand the danger uh, of what's going on, and some education process uh, goes in uh, through their research reports or maybe through invest education seminars uh, so that we will not have a repetition of what took place maybe a year ago uh, yet again in the market so that it will become a healthy positive movement in the ind indices uh, with some correction time to time uh, where you see the market coming down a bit and then going up again uh, but that's, that's healthy for the market rather than you just seeing sudden uh, jump in the market without any control. So it's also part of the education, which I think is an important thing which further need to enhance in the context of the broader uh, market activity. That was market analyst and LMD columnist Hasitha Prema Ratna. After a short commercial break, Anushan Selvaraja has the very latest on the LMD TNS survey with country manager of TNS Lanka, Kiran Chen. Stay tuned. The prepaid broadband offer of the year. Now with every new connection, get free data up to 8 GB and 6 months validity for just 2012 rupees. Mobitel. We care. Always. If you're looking for a leasing company to make your wheels go round. With fast, friendly and hassle-free service. Together with flexibility and the best interest rates in town. Let us show you how we can make your world go round. People's Leasing Company. We're the number one in leasing because pleasing people is our number one priority. The prepaid broadband offer of the year. Now with every new connection, get free data up to 8 GB and 6 months validity for just 2012 rupees. Mobitel. We care always. Welcome back to the show. I'm Anderson Selvaraja and with me now is the country manager for TNS Lanka, Kiran Etchen, with the latest on the LMB TNS survey. Uh, now, Kiran, what are survey respondents expecting from the forthcoming 2013 budget? The obvious expectation, Anushan, um, is on taxes. Uh, what it means to the general public is about, you know, what I on direct taxes and indirect taxes. Um, and uh, sorry to say that people are not too optimistic on both counts. On uh, direct taxes, on income taxes, um, only 30% plus are, um, believe that uh, you know, the taxes are going to come down. There's going to be some respite. 
The rest are either not sure or um, you know, believe that only the taxes are going to go up. So not a great story. It's not a great story on indirect taxes either. Um, more than 80% of the re respondents that we met believe that the price of essential commodities is going to remain high. So um, the overall, the story is not too great. Uh, the only positive uh, side to it is that uh, there are people talking about, you know, um, this upcoming budget is going to encourage uh, local businesses, um, you know, some impetus for uh, small and medium enterprises, um, employment. So that is on the positive side. But overall, uh, it is not optimistic expectations. What about tax administration, Kiran? Are they confident that measures will be put in place to simplify the process? No, Anushan. Um, in fact, um, I think people do not have an understanding of what tax administration means and what it means to them in their lives. Um, so um, uh, there is no strong point of view emerging from the survey. Uh, so uh, when you ask people about things that they don't know, you have got a split verdict. A third tell that you know they'll be simplified, and the third tell it'll be complicated. Uh, but I think people don't know what to expect. First of all, they don't know, and they don't know what to expect. Could you elaborate on the areas that, according to respondents, deserve priority in the upcoming budget? The, uh, the first and foremost top priority, number one priority, is about tackling cost of living today. Um, I'm going to just refer a couple of numbers here. Uh, close to 80% of uh, uh, the respondents that we met expect strong initiatives uh, to be taken uh, to um, uh, cut down on the price of essential commodities, which is just escalating these days. Um, another 70% plus, 76% are talking about reforms in the education sector and uh, talking about um, you know, uh, building our human resource capital. Um, close to another 78% uh, uh, are talking about employment. They are talking about you know, reforms in the employment sector, generating employments for graduates. Um, the point I talked earlier about you know, uh, encouraging local businesses and small and medium enterprises is also about generating employment and keeping them inside and not uh, allowing the brain drain to continue. There is also um, close to 65% plus who are talking about uh, uh, you know, the continued thrust on the healthcare sector. Um, so all in all, different topics being talked about, but mostly around education and uh, employment. Um, the, interestingly, there is also another 50% who are talking about uh, cutting down on the heavy defense budget and um, uh, pushing, plumbing that uh, uh, amount back into some of these high priority areas. That was the country manager for TNS Lanka, Kiran H. And we hope you enjoyed the show and we'll see you again next time.